what happens if you don't take that chance, if you don't make that change, if you don't make that move, if you don't get in that room, if you don't start that business, if you don't say the thing that you need to say, what happens if you don't do anything? Because when I think, oh my gosh, if I don't change anything, if I don't do anything in one year, I'm going to be here in three years. I'm going to be here in five years. I'm going to be here. I do not want that to be my life. And for me, that is a really powerful motivator to take action because you're either on the up curve or on the down curve. There's no such thing as steady state. Mama! Let's reimagine mom life together. Mama Has Goals is your hub for relatable support and helpful resources that help you fuel yourself alongside motherhood. Your identity is bigger than mom, and whatever your goals are, together we're making them a reality. Mamas, this is such a good conversation today. Today on the podcast, I have Brooke Hemingway, who is a friend that I've met through being in event spaces. I met her at my friend Christine's event, and we just connected right away on her big family and her desire to communicate that you do not have to choose one over the other. You can go after your goals and dreams and live this good life while having this big, beautiful family, if that's what you desire. And Brooke has no entrepreneurial experience. She is a former nurse and fitness professional who turned a turned her life into being a powerhouse seven-figure leader. She is a multi-passionate entrepreneur at this point, high-performance coach, speaker, event creator, and mom. She has a unique experience both building these large businesses and coaching others to do the same. From leadership strategy, mindset, to tactically what it truly looks like, she has helped women become unstoppable and awaked into their full potential. Today, we're going to talk a little bit about business, but we're really going to talk about her life, how she's built this aligned life alongside her goals and what that looks like on a daily basis, the decisions they've made as a family. She describes herself as a definite overachiever and believer, a visionary and boundary pusher. She says, if someone tells me I can't do something, I will always find a way. I believe there's so much more that we are all capable of if we're just willing to dig deeper, accept and embrace our dreams and go after them without allowing ourselves to play small and settle for excuses. We dive into the how to actually do this today because as a mom of six children, she has built her network marketing business to seven figures, expanded into coaching, speaking, running events, retreats, and other businesses while having babies, nursing babies, homeschooling, and everything in between. So if you wanna talk about how to take action, be in the messy middle, and create a life that you dream of, this episode is for you. Brooke, I'm so excited to have you here. You're one of my favorite people I've met in this journey because you're such a solid person. You're so genuine. You're an inspirational mom and you have a really layered life and story, which I think is really motivational for women to see. But also I love it because that's just like how you've chosen to navigate life. And one of the parts of that that I think our community can really resonate with is how you've built on top of a network marketing business. And that's kind of where you started in this version of your life. So I want to start there and talk about how did you make that yes initially going back to that? Because I've heard you talk a lot about how you're like, that was not my personality. (laughs) That is not what I thought I would do. But it's now a seven-figure business. It's totally impacted your network. And we're going to talk about where it's taken you since. But I want to go back to like that very first moment where mom, Brooke, is home with her kids and is like, yeah, I'm going to say yes to this. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, it totally was uncharacteristic for me, not anything that I would do. My background is in health and wellness. So I was an ICU nurse yeah. for 10 years. I was in fitness as an instructor and a trainer for 20 years. And looking back, I can see the connections between what I did then and what I do now in that as a fitness instructor and you know a personal trainer, I love to motivate people to change their lives yeah. and empower them to you know take back their life, take back their health. And so in some way, shape, or form, I've always been in this sort of empowerment business. And then as a nurse, I wanted to help people. I wanted to take care of them. I just found that doing those two things weren't quite hitting the mark. And especially yeah. working as a nurse, I, I didn't really feel like I was on the side of actually helping people. It was kind of like I was on the back end, like they were already sick, they were already falling apart. And so yeah. I didn't feel very empowered in that profession. And I wasn't looking for something. I think that's how it happens for most people. 
I mean, yeah. you know, a lot of people like Keisha, for example, we both know her had a, a start in network marketing and lots of other people. And, you know, we're not looking for it, but we're open. And typically yeah. we're looking for something to help us personally. And I was looking for something to help me personally as a mom. At the time I had just given birth to my fifth. She was like six or seven weeks old. We just built our dream house here in Hawaii. We had put a lot of blood, sweat and tears, like literally painted the whole house. I was on the floor painting baseboards when I went into labor, you know, yeah. with my fifth. And so life was really full, super busy. I'd stepped away from nursing, wasn't looking for anything except what I personally needed is I needed help with my postpartum depression. I needed help with my anxiety. I needed help with my energy. Like I literally just felt like my whole life had been sucked out of me, you know, growing five babies in nine years and birthing yeah. them. So it started for me as a, journey, a health journey. I was looking for something. So I kind of was brought to my knees because I'd been struggling a lot with those things and it humbled me sufficiently to be willing to try something. I did fall in love with that product like very quickly and it helped me so much with those things. And then it was just one day I got an invitation like, hey, why don't you put it out there? And for whatever reason, I didn't like really hesitate. I was like, okay, whatever. And yeah. I think that there's like some beautiful benefit to like not being, you know, uh, influential or popular or having a huge audience or like really, I didn't really think I was anything special. And I was like, yeah, whatever, I'll put it out there. Nobody will pay attention. Well, turns out that even with a small network, because people knew like I was a person of my word and like I don't get behind just anything. I had 150 Facebook friends and zero Instagram. This was eight years ago. And yeah. I had eight people, eight mamas immediately come to me and want this. And so that was the birth of it. But even then I was like, am I really doing this? Like, is this something I'm doing? Like, I'm not really doing this, right? And I didn't yeah. actually really make the decision that I was totally doing this until I had a hundred customers or clients. And at that wow. point I was like, I, I, I mean, I guess I'm, I guess I'm doing this. And yeah. so if I'm going to do this, like I do everything in my life, I, I'm going to do it the best I can do it. Cause I'm like an all in kind of a person. Like if I'm going to yeah. put my name behind something, if I'm going to do something, I'm going to do the best that I can possibly do because I want to serve people well. I want to show up for people like these people have trusted me. You know, they've come in here. And so I'm going to take good care of them. And that was kind of my decision was like, hey, it's not about me. Like I've involved all these other people. All these people are thriving. I need to step up and I need to become a leader and I need to do yeah. the things that are going to make me better. And so I really have this feeling it's not about me. And then as I dove into it, I started to see like with every step, I was like, okay, I see what this really is. This is community building. This is leadership. This is me empowering other people to believe in themselves, to believe they can change, to believe in their dreams, to take back whether it's their health or take back, back their voice or their confidence. I really, really started to see it for what I think it is, which is leadership development and empowering other yeah. people. And once I realized that, I was like, oh, game on. I'm in because I've always loved empowering people. And, you know, so that's that's kind of where that decision came from. But yeah, I never thought I would do anything like this. It's not my background, like social media marketing, sales, marketing, anything like that. Not in my field, but yeah. I was willing and I was open. And instead of like, asking myself every step of the way, well, how and why and all these different things. I was like, feels good. Feels like I should do it. Okay, yeah. let's give it a go, you know? Yeah. And I get questions all the time. Is Mama House Goals a network marketing business and company? Right. And it's not, but I'm a huge advocate for network marketing actually because of all the yeah. things you're saying. It is a way to really expand your network in kind of a controlled environment. Like you have people helping you do it along the way. It's a great like catapult for self-development and leadership. Yeah. And like you said, leadership development and having someone guide you and done well, it is such an amazing business. And that's yeah. what it has been so fun to watch your community because you've led them with such heart and such genuine opportunity. And it's such a cool thing to see, but you've also expanded beyond that. So when mm -hmm. did you first start kind of utilizing that foundation to build something more of your own? 
Yeah. And, and I think this is such an important point because a lot of times we get going in something and we think, well, this is just what I'm known for. This is what I'm good at. Like, maybe I shouldn't step outside of this. I should just like stay in this yeah. box. And I have a really expansive kind of spirit. Like my number one core value is freedom. So if you yeah. tell me like, well, you're just a network marketer or that's all you can do, I'll be like, well, watch me do other things, right? Yeah. Like I, we are multidimensional and I feel like especially as women, we're multi-passionate and yeah. we have to give ourselves permission to expand. So while I have that business and grew that business to a seven-figure business in three years, which is really uncommon, but I just, I went yeah. all in and I saw it for what it was and I, I saw this community growing. But the other thing that I saw is that what happened to me is I hadn't dealt with some of the things that were limiting me. I hadn't dealt with a lot of these feelings of not enoughness. I was mm -hmm. performing for my worth. I was winning these private island trips and these $14,000 shopping sprees and all these things. But like the walls were coming down and the sky was falling because I hadn't dealt with my feelings of doubt and lack of self-worth. And I hadn't done the healing that I needed to do. And it all came to a head about five years ago on my husband's birthday, you know, June 14th. I'll never forget it. It was his birthday. I was so wrapped up in my work. I was like this with my phone holding a baby. I had my sixth baby at that time. And I was struggling so much inside that the only thing I knew how to do was like work. Well, let me work because at least I'm really good at that because I felt like yeah. I'm a bad mom. I'm a bad wife. I'm a bad like I'm bad at everything and I just need to prove that I'm good at something. And so I overworked, which I think is what a lot of people do. Yeah. And it was his birthday and he was telling me, hey, I really want to go to the beach as a family. We were here in this house and I didn't even really hear him because I was not present. And he mm -hmm. just lost it because this had been going on for a while. And he yeah. said, you know what? You can have your business. I'll take the effing kids and leave. And the thing that was like the realization that I had in that moment when he left, because he did take the kids and go to the beach. I stayed home yeah. with the baby is when he said that I felt nothing. I felt nothing. Wow. I was just like so numb and just like burying and burying and burying all these feelings. And so he went, I sat by myself, nursed my baby, and I had time to think about it. And when he came back, I said two things. I said, number one, you're right. Something's got to change and I'm struggling. And number two, if you ever leave, I'll take everything and I'll have the kid. <laughs> like, <laughs> that little sassy side of me that was like, yeah, no, it's like, you're not taking the kids from me. And, but you know what? He was just frustrated. He's such a good guy, yeah. but like he needed to get through to me and that got through to me. And mm -hmm. so, yeah, I had this whole big successful business, loved empowering women, loved leading, loved succeeding. Like I'm a producer, I'm a type A, you give me a goal, you give me a carrot, I'll reach it. But at yeah. the cost of not dealing with the things that needed to be dealt with. And so I dove into my own personal growth, my own healing work, coaches, conferences. Like I put myself in so many rooms. I had coaches, I read the books. Like I did so much personal work over the next year that did a lot of healing and a lot of growth. And I was able to continue to grow that business. But I also knew looking around at my community, other people need these tools. Other mm -hmm. people need to know that they don't have to give up their dreams in order to be a good mom. They don't have to give up yeah. their dreams in order to be a good wife because really at the root of all of it was I had this core belief that everything good in my life comes to an end and I can't have it all. Like I can't mm -hmm. be a good mom and a good wife and a millionaire. Like I've got to yeah. pick. And so I almost quit all the work stuff. I almost just stepped back and was going to just enjoy this residual income. But something inside of me was like, no, you can have all of those things that you want. You've just got to find the way. And for me, mm -hmm. it was finding out how to live a life in alignment. So when I, when I went through that myself, and I went through the journey of growth. I just had this deep desire to help teach other women. I'm super passionate about women, super passionate about mamas, because I feel like we are the most powerful creators. I mean, we create life. Yeah. Like we are, we are so powerful. And I see so many women giving up on their dreams, quitting their businesses, playing small, 
because they can't find that sweet spot of alignment. And so they just figure, you know, it's not possible. And that's why I started doing events. That's why I started doing retreats because I know when good women have a lot of money, a lot of good stuff happens. And so I love to help women make a lot of money and break through their limitations. And it came from my own pain story. Yeah. And that expands into our kids and our partners and everything else. What did that in-between period look like? Because, you know, you're in this state where you're not spending maybe enough time with your family and your partner and you're not present. And it's not even about the number of hours, in my opinion. It's about the quality of those hours and the presence when we're there. And so not being present in even those 15 minutes is really where it matters. Not that you have eight hours a day that you're spending with your kids. Right. So once you decided step, you were stepping into these different conferences and really growing yourself into being present and yeah. finding this aligned good life as your brand is, Yeah. what did that in between look like? Because in some ways you were probably spending more time on yourself. It was just different. You just maybe weren't working as hard, but you were going so deep and having this like transformation of who you were. So you weren't necessarily all of a sudden with the kids and your husband all the time. And I think that can be really tricky for women when they step into this version of their goals because all of a sudden they're they're looking for that alignment, but they're like, wait, I'm actually busier than I was (laughs) before. So how do how did you make that transition to then figure out what that alignment looked like? Well, there's an energy and a spirit behind it. Because Mm -hmm. I, I feel like our kids have the best BS like sensors. And so they know if mom's not happy, they know if things are off. And I really actually think our kids want us to be happy and they want to see us like happy and they can feel that energy. And, and we know this is true because little kids will do anything to get mommy to smile or give them a hug. Like they want to see us happy. And so it's better for my kids to see me busy and working on projects I love and being happy as opposed to like you know, tapping out, numbing out, scrolling on my phone, watching TV, because I can be just as disengaged as a stay-at-home mom (laughs) or as a working mom. I just want to be clear there. And so I think it's an energy sort of a thing. And when you start doing the work on yourself and you start actually diving into the projects that you love, you become a mom that's like skipping up the steps and saying, okay, mommy's going to go do a call. I'll see you an hour. And they'll be like, okay, mom, because they see like, oh, mom loves what she does. We're teaching them a really valuable lesson. And it really is like, for me, the in-between looked like being present in the moments. And I have an example of that even just from this morning. You know, when I'm here in Hawaii, my workday starts at like 6.30. Like I will be starting Mm -hmm. calls at 6.30 because everyone is like so much farther ahead. So I'm up at 5, 5.30. So when my kids get up in the morning, I'm already working, which is not normal for me because when I'm on the mainland, it's different, but it's just what I have to do. I have to flex. And so in between some calls, I had like a half an hour and it's like, okay, I have a half an hour. You know, I come into the room. I can sense that my daughter is really frustrated. She's trying to make this little book out of paper. And you know what? There's probably some other things I could have done in the house or do the dishes or whatever. But I was like, you know what? I'm going to go over to the table. I'm going to get the paper cutter out and I'm going to show her how to make a book. And it took 15 minutes, but like the light in her eyes and how excited she was that while mommy did her next call, like she was going to draw the pictures and write the words. It was 15 minutes, you guys, but it was 15 minutes of me being in awareness and being in alignment. What matters most right now? Me cleaning the dishes or me helping her make her little book? And so it looks like those little choices because the truth is I have a very busy schedule. I am self-employed 100%, but I work full time and I don't make any excuses for that. I have flexibility in my schedule and I flex where I want to work and I can make a lot of different choices, but I still have to get the work done. And that means that in those 15 minute blocks or those 30 minute blocks or at lunchtime or nap time or bedtime, like the phone is not there. I'm not distracted. I'm all in with them. And it totally is quality. And then also like the in-between of what that looked like was me setting aside like specific family hours. Like, okay, I can be all in with my work, but when it comes to be like Friday at four o'clock, like mm -mm, 
we're done. Like it's family time. We ride bikes, we make homemade pizza, we watch movies. And so when the family knows like, okay, we have these specific things to look forward to, they no longer feel so victimized. And when I was in the process of changing and growing these businesses, I was really cognizant of not victimizing my children and not victimizing my family. And here's what I mean. If I'm feeling so sorry for my kids and I'm feeling so bad for my kids and my poor husband, I'm essentially saying I'm letting you down and you should feel like something is wrong. And Mm -hmm. I was very cognizant to not create that environment and instead to create an environment where they realized they were winning because mom was creating. And so we had very open conversations about, you know, mom is doing this. And as I do this, we're bringing dad home more. Dad's not having to work 80 hours. And wow, we get to take this trip together as a family because of mom's work. And we became more of a team. So instead of me feeling sad for my kids and making them into victims, I made a conscious decision that my children are benefactors of my success. They're benefactors in the way that we live. They're benefactors in the way that they think. They are free thinkers now. They are creators and creatives. And it, it was hard, you guys, like moms listening out there. It was so hard to fight off the mom guilt and the doubt. Oh my gosh, am I doing the right thing? Am I ruining their lives? And I had to be like, okay, Brooke, okay. Like, look at the life you're living. Look at the life they're living. Look at the lessons they're learning. Look at the kind of adults they're going to become. You are winning. You are winning, mamas. And that doubt you feel, that's just your ego trying to keep you safe, trying to Mm -hmm. shut you down, trying to keep you small. And it is going to try and it is going to send vicious attacks at you. But I think it it just for me was like, I know I'm supposed to be doing this work. And just because you know you're supposed to be doing some work does not mean it's going to be easy. Just because you know it. It doesn't, doesn't make it easy. It's just kind of like, well, here we go, you know? Yeah, it's the journey. Mm-hmm. I love that you bring up not victimizing them. It actually reminds me of like when your kids fall down and they're little and you go and respond and they're like, oh, wait, maybe I am hurt actually now that you look scared, mom. Yes. I'm scared too. And it's kind of the same thing of like, you know, if you just kind of wait and let them yeah. see, okay, am I hurt or am I not hurt? Let me evaluate mm-hmm. this for myself then they get to make that decision for themselves and then you can respond accordingly. But if you're like, oh no, you're hurt. I'm going to respond to you that way. It's going to be the same thing. If they're like, mom, you're not here. Mom, you're not doing this. And you're like, I know, I know. I'm I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Then they're going to respond the same way. Yeah. But if you're really like being present and being aware, and that's the other point that you made that I really think was great is this morning when you were walking in that room and you were aware that your daughter was frustrated. Because if we're not doing something that we're aligned with, if we're not pursuing something that brings the best out of us, it's actually not about the hours. It's about the type of person we are in that downtime. So we can be awake and we can be aware and we can Mm -hmm. notice when our child is feeling off because you could be putting those hours, the exact same amount of hours into something else that brings out a different side of you and then yep. you're not aware because you're just burnt out. You're yeah. you not the what best you're version doing. of yourself. Yeah, you hate what you're doing. And so having that alignment in your life to create that awareness and that peace for as a family, yeah. you're all in the same boat. And you've done this in so many ways, but you guys have multiple houses. You kind of, I call it house hopping. You're in different <laughs> places all the time. And the other thing I really admire about how you do that and how you travel all the time is being a mom of six kids from the outside, it looks like you're so aware of how you're spending solo time or really focused time with one or two to three of the children at a time. And then you have full family time as well. Talk to me a little bit about how you balance all these trips, all the six kids, the personalities, the needs, the activities. How do you make it all work? Well, we are pretty honest with our kids. And I, I talk, especially to my older four, they're 11, 13, 15, and 17 at the time of this recording. My oldest is 17. My two girls at the tail end are eight and six. With my older kids, I'm very honest. And I, and I, I don't hide the fact that sometimes I feel inadequate. And I don't hide the fact that some things are hard for me. And I don't hide the fact that I'm doing the best I can do. And so I'll say to them, you know what, I, I'm doing the best that I can do. And, you know, I'm really looking forward to this. And 
you know, I'm having a hard day. I'm feeling a lot of self-doubt. And, and so I think a lot of times as parents, we try to hold everything inside and we don't want to show our kids emotion or show our kids struggle. But I feel like involving them in seeing that is important because sometime mm -hmm. in their life, they're going to struggle. Sometime in their life, they're going to feel guilt or pain or like they failed. And then they're also going to see me succeed. They're also yeah. going to see me do incredible things and they're going to see the resiliency. And so I think open communication, kind of talking to them, you know, like they're adults has been super important. And also, um, you know, with our oldest kids, like they homeschool, those four oldest kids homeschool. Now, for those of you that are listening that are like, wow, you're a super mom. I also want to be honest here because I'm not looking for like the merit badge for the mom that does the most things. Like I don't, that's, let's not pretend here. My yeah. two oldest go to school online and they're doing college. And that happened because of COVID. Like COVID happened, schools were closed and we were looking for options and we found a dual enrollment high school and college. We're like, cool. And then they took off and decided because we've shown them you can do anything that you want to do. They took off and they, they decided they wanted to finish college before they're 18. So they're doing that. And then I've got two middle schoolers and they're like, cool. Well, I see what my brothers are doing. I want to ski twice a day. I want to surf twice a day. Like, I want to have that freedom. Like, we didn't make them homeschool. Well, I think sometimes people think like, oh, that's weird. You make your kids stay home. No, our kids had a choice. It's like, yeah. you can go to school totally fine if that's what you want to do, or you can homeschool, but I'm not going to ride you. I teach a lot personal responsibility. Like, our kids mm -hmm. are responsible for getting their work done, and they know the reward is they can ski in the morning and they can ski in the afternoon when we're at our mountain house, or they can surf in the morning, they can surf in the afternoon but they have to keep their good grades and they have to get their work done. Yeah. I am not a micromanaging kind of a mom. Yeah. And with our daughters, they go to traditional school. You know, they, they um, go to regular elementary school, but also we take a little bit of flex with that. And they're yeah. doing great in school and we make sure that they're supported. But if we want to travel for two weeks as a family, we take them out of school. And it's, it's this whole like freedom and independence piece of entrepreneurship that I think your mm -hmm. eyes get opened. Once you start going down that path, you realize, oh, if I don't want to be, I don't have to be the traditional mom. We don't have yeah. to fit into a box. And, and this is a season of how we're living right now. And who knows, maybe in a couple of years, we'll be like, we only want to be in one place. But right now, yeah. this, is what we, this is what we love. And a part of our discussion is as a family, like, hey, you know, where do we want to spend the winter? Where do we want to spend the summer? It's really, it's a team. Like we, yeah. we're a team and I tell people like we've written our own rules for what it looks like to be parents and to be entrepreneurs. And I wish that more people knew that there were other options, that if you yeah. feel like you're in a prison, it's probably a self-imposed prison. Nobody else puts you in a cage. You are allowing yourself to stay in these invis behind these invisible bars. And if you want to do something different with your family, you can do something different with your family. If you want to do, do something different with your career and you are dying in your career, Kelsey and I will tell you, there's so many ways to make money. It might come yeah. in a form that you didn't like expect. Like for me, it started out as network marketing and then it expanded into, I have network marketing. I have a coaching community with hundreds of people in it that creates residual income, a six figure income every year. I do events now. I speak, I do webinars, like all these different things, like there are so many ways to make money. And I would just ask you to like ask yourself, do I really like the current setup I have for my family and with my kids? If I could create my dream situation, like what would it be? And for me, it's to have this flex. Like I want to live in Hawaii part of the year. I want to live in the mountains where it looks like it's Christmas. And I want to be on the beach yeah. in Florida. And uh, you know what? Nobody else has to approve of it. Nobody yeah. else, your mom doesn't have to approve, your sister, your best friend. Like if it feels right to you and your family, then it's the right choice, period. End of story. Yeah. And do you feel like you have solely created this? Because I'm sure there's parts of it you didn't see anyone else doing. But did your opportunities get expanded because you pushed yourself into new rooms and new places that you saw what was possible? Or did you fully not see anyone doing any of these things? Because I know for me, 
it's been that I've seen other people it, and there's yeah. certain things that we'll make our own, right? Just like I'm sure you've made your own, you've chosen yeah. the places you've chosen and whatnot. But once I saw there were different ways to work, there were different ways that our family could live. And there even just the opportunities of homeschooling and college and high school, like I've learned so much of that from you and that I don't have to homeschool and be the sole teacher because that was one of my fears too. I was like, I do I don't not teach think my I want to be the teacher. <laughs> I do not teach my kids. (laughs) But having that, seeing it in someone else has been huge for me. Is that how you found these opportunities too? Yes and no. I mean, I had never had anyone really close to me like do network marketing. So, and I think the benefit of that is that I didn't come into it with preconceived notions and I I wasn't like negative about it because I'd never had a Mm -hmm. negative experience. So I was kind of more like, duh, why wouldn't I want to make or seven figures, like with a sharing a product that I love, like it just, it just made sense to me because I, and I never seen anyone, I, I'd never seen anyone do it. So I didn't feel badly about it, but also because I'd never seen anyone do it. I didn't fully grasp that you could make that much money. So I was first, you know, in my family first in my network of friends to do that. I did have some friends that were writing their own rules and how they parented and homeschooled and stuff. So I had a few examples of that. Um, and then I also, my first event that I did, well, really here's, here's a cool little side note is, you know, when you are building a network marketing team, a lot of times what you do is you do retreats. And so I just intrinsically had this idea, like people need people. I, nobody really taught me that. I was like, people need people. And I knew that it wasn't all about me. And through building a network marketing team, I realized if I got all these people together that were working aside one another, if I got them all in a room together and got them to develop relationships with each other and love each other, they were going to be in it for life. They were going to be each other's support system. And I wasn't going to have to feel the weight of supporting all these people. So I started doing retreats. I just started to create these six people, then 10 people, then 15, then 20, then 40. And I'd done like a, a retreat for 40 people. And then in August of 2019, I was like, more people need this. And I did an 80 person retreat. And that was my first Align event was that 80 person retreat. And it was just kind of like, as I go, I'm figuring this out. Do I bring in outside speakers? What do I do for gifts? How do I structure the day? Do we do workouts as part of it? And it was just kind of feeling into what's authentic to me and what do these people need? Because- I have to align like what's authentic for me and what people need. And so I was also kind of first, like in my company first in in my network to start bringing people together into conferences. I'd never been to a conference at that point. But in October of 2019, I went to my first big conference. It was a Brendan Burchard conference. It was called Influencer. It was in San Diego in 2019. I think he did it once and then COVID happened. So I went to that and there were like 2,000 people in the room. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. Like the energy. And I heard Jamie Kern Lima speak there and like just uh, Rachel Hollis back in the day. Like I heard all these different people speaking. And I was like, this is so powerful to get even more people into a room and to do something yeah. bigger. And that did inspire me to do my larger event that I do in January. So I had nudges. I had hints, yeah. but in a lot of ways, it was the feeling. It. Yeah, it was the feeling I had in my heart and, and just this pull and tug to like, hey, do this thing. And of course, all of us, you know, those of you listening, you've had a tug, you've had a nudge, and it's followed immediately by, who am I? How could I do that? I don't have enough, you know. So for better or for worse, I have this sort of like impulsive streak where I get an idea and I act on it right away and I act on it and it kind of like puts me in, in line for like, I have to do it. Like I take an action, I make some kind of a commitment, I make some kind of an announcement and it holds my feet to the fire. So if you're having nudges and there's something you want to do, whether you've seen it done or not, take an action on it right away. Because if you start taking an action on it, it's going to lessen that doubt. It's going to lessen that fear. And it's going to yeah. speed up your path to success or your calling or whatever it is you're supposed to do. Take action. 
Yeah. You know, there's a saying, fail fast, right? And it's allowing yourself to take action because the faster you take action and if you fail or when you fail, then you can just keep moving forward because you're closer to success the more that you fail. Let's talk about some of your failures or learnings and how you have overcome them. How do you get yourself? And you don't have to give us specifics if you don't want to, because I know sometimes yeah. you literally forget because you're like, I just keep moving. So you're like, I don't even yeah. remember, but I know I've had them. But how in that moment, if there's a woman listening who maybe it was network marketing that she failed at, and yeah. she's now thinking about starting something else or yeah. she's looking at a different company. How do you get back up when you feel like you just are not yeah. going to be successful at that thing? Yeah. I mean, my number one rule is it's not everything, so don't make it everything. So if you had one mm. bad experience, one failed network marketing business, one failed coaching launch, like something didn't go right, like it's not everything, so don't make it everything. Don't extrapolate it onto everything else in your life. Like there's good doctors, bad doctors, good lawyers, bad lawyers, good network marketing, bad network marketing, good coaches, bad coaches. Like there's, there's like we, we tend to like have one experience and we turn it around and we project it onto everything else. And so if you yeah. see yourself doing that, just stop. Realize you can have a failure. You can make a mistake. You can have a bad experience. And that is not the totality of your experience. It's just one thing. So that's my number one. Um, my number two is uh, don't do everything for everyone else. Like, if you're starting a business and you have business partners or even as a parent, like stop doing everything for everyone in your life and using that as like a badge of like, oh, I'm a good mom or I'm a good leader or I'm a good uh, business owner. Like the best thing you can do is empower other people to take action and to take responsibility. And early on in my career, I was doing too much for other people. And as a mother, I was doing too much for my kids, including like wiping their butts till they were like five or six years old. And <laughs> I know you're laughing, right? Like control, yeah. control no. freak, control freak. No, because right I'm what I'm thinking. My oldest is about to be five. And I'm like thinking through this transition that we've had where I'm like, you need to start doing stuff yourself. Like, and he's totally like, it's so funny you bring this up because my son being that age right now, there yes. are things that he will do for himself five days of the week. And then one day of the week, he'll be like, mom, I can't, I need yes. help. And I'm like, okay, what is the underlying reason that you're asking for help here? And how yeah. can I provide that? Because I don't actually need to put your shoes on. Yeah. Like you're fully capable of putting your shoes and on. What they but we as moms just get sucked into doing it. And leaders, sometimes yes. we start doing it for the people on our team or anything else. Yes. And what they really need is to hear, I believe in you. You've got yes. this. You've got all the tools. Like. Or asking them a question, well, what are you going to do? Well, what's your next yeah. step? Well, what do you think you should do? And if I could go back, I would do less for people. And I would just yeah. empower them more. I would control the situation less. Because essentially what you're saying when you try to control the situation is, I don't believe you're capable. Mm -hmm. Like that is the unconscious or subconscious message you're sending is, I don't believe you're capable to succeed. Yeah. So mommy better rush in here or leader better rush in here. Or Queen B better rush in here and she better fix everything. And so yeah. give people power, give them assignments and don't do everything for everyone. The third yeah. thing that I would say is uh, not everyone is for you and that is okay. Not everyone is for you and that is okay. You do not need everyone to love you. You do not need everyone's approval and you do not need everyone to be on your side. Stop trying to convince people Stop trying to argue with people. Stop trying to show what a good person you are or good business person you are or like just how great you are. Like stop trying to convince people and just be you. The fact is some people are never going to be for you and that's okay. You don't want them to be. And the rooms that you create and the products that you create and the communities that you create, not going to be for everyone and that's okay. It doesn't make you better or them better. It just means like, hey, in order to attract what you want, you're going to have to repel some things. So some people yeah. are going to be repelled. Some people don't like me. It's totally fine. I have to like me and I have mm -hmm. to like living my life and I have to create things. Listen very closely. You have to create things you would want to stay in. And you're not going to stay in something that's not authentic to you. So you're building a house of cards and just 
be okay with letting go those people that aren't for you. Last but not least, listen to yourself. Listen to yourself. I learned this lesson the hard way a couple of years ago when a business relationship fell apart because for a year or two before that, I was not listening to myself. And I was really trying to people please. And I was really trying to make exceptions for why this was okay and that was okay and this behavior was okay. And, and I wasn't listening to myself. I wasn't listening to the science. I wasn't listening to the health issues I started to have. I wasn't listening to the depression and anxiety I started to experience. I was totally muting that little girl inside and the big girl that I am now. And I realized, girl, you got to listen to yourself. Like Patrice Washington shares this story of like, hey, it starts out as a pebble, then it's a rock, then it's a freaking boulder. And it's like, it doesn't have to get to the boulder stage where it hits you in the head and totally knocks you out. Start listening when it's the pebble. And the voice that's inside of you will not lead you astray. So start Mm -hmm. tapping into that voice and listening and knowing what that is and getting quiet and asking yourself, what do I really need to do? What is the truth here? What is my soul telling me? I would have saved myself a lot of pain, a lot of money, lots of things if I would have just listened to myself. And I think so often we have to slow down to do that and being moms that are going after our goals, trying to balance all the things with our families and our kids, our businesses, our jobs, or whatever it is that we're looking to achieve, slowing down can be a hard task sometimes. And I know you actually do this really well with some of your non-negotiables, whether it's around your health or how you're showing up for yourself. How did you transition into those habits or have you always had them? And what are some of the things that you do make sure you do on a daily basis? Well, I would say when I learned that lesson five years ago and we kind of had that blow up, I had actually stopped taking care of myself. So some of those non-negotiables of moving my body every day, getting outside every day, those fell by the wayside. And so I started to create this thing that I called six for six, which is basically like six days a week, I'll move my body at least 20 minutes. It wasn't seven for seven because that reeks of perfectionism. And I was trying to break that perfectionism, but I was trying to teach myself that I have 20 minutes for myself every day. And so ever since that day, I have committed to that, whether that is walking or jogging or doing some Pilates or just squats and push-ups, or, you know, going to the gym or whatever it is. It's like, if I don't have 20 minutes, I don't have a life. So one non-negotiable for me is legitimately moving my body every day. And it's not about exercise. It's about keeping a commitment with myself and it's about generating energy and it's built with myself a trusting relationship. So that's a non-negotiable for me, at least this is going to seem like really like it's not enough, but I think it's the culmination of very small things over time that makes a huge difference. And as a mom of six kids with three businesses, I can't meditate for an hour, you guys. That's not even like when I listen to some people's morning routines, I'm like, cool, you don't have a child and you're a dude in your 40s. (laughs) Awesome. So glad you can do that, bro. But I'm like, here's my reality, right? Like I've either had a nursing baby or a toddler or teens that stay up late or littles that get up early. And so five minutes, five minutes of nothing, five minutes of quiet time, five minutes to center myself. Sometimes it is sitting on my bathroom floor or laying on my bathroom floor. Like that is a non-negotiable. And then every single day, every single day, because my natural state before I was an entrepreneur was glass half empty negative, everything good in my life Mm -hmm. comes to an end. I already told you that. I had to reprogram my brain. So every single day, I listen to something that empowers me, inspires me, helps me to grow, helps me to believe in myself. And then the fourth non-negotiable I would say is I do supplement like a boss and I eat real food because I do believe that what you put in is what comes out. So My input is going to affect my output. And I have learned so much about health and nutrition and all these things over the year that I've learned I'm not a garbage disposal, especially at 45. The older you get, ladies, those of you listening, the older you get, the better care you need to take of yourself. And when I put good in, I get good out. So non-negotiable for me is real food, nutritious food, supplementation. And that's really it. Like it's super simple. If I do those four things, Actually, there's a fifth. Can I, can I name my fifth? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And this is a, this is a self-care thing and it may not seem like a self-care thing, but 
if we were in a room and I asked people to raise their hands, I, I would ask them, like, how many of you guys crash land into your day? How many of you guys experience chaos or overwhelm like day after day after day? And you feel like you're just on this hamster wheel. That used to survival be survival mode. Yeah, survival yeah. mode, hot mess mom. It's like super cute to hashtag. I'm like, that is not <laughs> cute. Okay. It's not cute. Let's stop it. And so what I started to do to take better care of myself was the night before, like before I go to bed, I map out my day. Like what is tomorrow yeah. going to look like and what are my top three priorities? And the reason why this goes under self-care and loving myself is because when I wake up in the morning, my heart's not racing. I don't feel chaos right away. I feel peace. I know what I'm walking into. And that feels like a form of self-love. Chaos and drama and overwhelm and having no schedule and flying by the seat of my pants is not self-love. Self-love is me like walking into the day, feeling empowered, feeling like I've got this, feeling this peace and calm that I know, you know, what's coming up that day. And so I'm a boss with doing that as well. Yeah, that was the first thing I did when I did what I call my self-discovery journey was mapping out my day the next day. And it was super impactful, still do it every day. And just looking at my calendar is like the bare minimum, but I highly recommend that too. And definitely putting good food in your body. And I think for anyone that's hearing like these five things and they're like, where do I start? What do I do? I feel like just breaking it down and I think you would just echo this is, okay, focus on real food over fake food to start and then focus on moving your body. If you can't do 20 minutes, do five minutes. And I know for me being a really busy minded person in the sense that my brain doesn't stop when people would tell me, sit with yourself and be quiet, even for five minutes, I would try it and I'd sit there and I'd be like, okay, this is dumb. Like I need to get up and do something. So I think for me, literally setting a timer for five minutes and sitting in a quiet space is how I started. Is that what you would recommend yep. too? Especially mm -hmm. if you can still, you might still hear kids screaming in the background, but yeah. you're sitting in a place. What do you, yeah. is that how you would start for that? Honestly, what it looks like for me a lot of times is I'm usually the first one up in the house and I actually just, I wake up and I sit at the side of my bed. I just mm. sit there. And sometimes, you know, when I'm in Hawaii, the windows are open and I can feel the trade winds and I start to hear like the birds chirping and the roosters. And I just sit and I, I give myself like that five minutes to sort of come to myself and to just like, instead of like hopping out of bed and running to do something, I give myself the five minutes of stillness. That's honestly where the five minutes is in my day is before I even start the day. I don't rush into my phone. I don't rush into other people's needs. I don't rush into work or working out. For me, like that's simply where it goes. And it's, I was the same way. I had a really hard time sitting still because as a mom and as a businesswoman, like there is a never ending list, but guess what? That list is not going to go anywhere. It's just going to keep growing and time is going to continue to pass where you're not giving yourself the space and time to calm your nervous system, to breathe, to slow the heck down. And to gather yourself before you start the day, the list is always going to be there. And five minutes is not going to make or break anything that you have on your list. But five minutes is going to help you to regulate your nervous system in the morning so that you're not entering everything triggered and everything just like with your nerves shot, which is how I used to enter the day. So I would just like plead with you, give yourself five minutes if that's exactly right when you wake up or if it's at lunchtime, or if it's before you go to bed. I think earlier in the day is better though, yeah. because that's when you really kind of need to set the tone for your day. I'm not a fancy pantsy, like you got to do it this way or that way or this way. I'm like, no, sit at the side of your bed and breathe. Sit down for five minutes. Figure yes. out how that works for you. Yes. yes. And I think with so many things in our lives, we have to have the small daily thing and the habits, but big things matter too. And, you know, it reminds me of like with your partner, you want to connect with each other every day, but it doesn't mean that date nights or weekends away are important also. And when we think about our own self-development growth, our time, these five habits as an example are really important, but also putting ourselves in bigger experiences and bigger environments is really important too. And I want to talk about your event that's coming up because I've been at events with you. I've been at your smaller events. This will be my first bigger event and I'm super excited to go. But before we talk about why you do that and what's going to happen there, I wanted to get back because you said the first event you ever went to, Jamie Kern Lima was a speaker at, and yes. now she's speaking at your event. Like, how <laughs> cool. 
Like just a couple years later, what is that? Five years later, you go from four. attending and four years later, yeah, you go from attending an event where this amazing woman. So for those that don't know who Jamie Kern Lima is, she sold it cosmetics to L'Oreal for billions of dollars. I'd have to look up what it was and became the first female CEO. She has an amazing story, but you went and listened to her speak. And now she's at your event as a friend and speaking. Yes. Like that is so cool. Yes, it's huge. It was a manifestation, really. I, you know, when I was in that audience in 2019, a couple cool things happened. She was, she actually was at that event for herself. She didn't tell Brenda Burchard she was going to be there. She wasn't slated to be a speaker. She had signed up and bought a ticket to attend the event herself. She sold it cosmetics for $1.2 billion. So a billionaire was like, I need personal growth and development. And so she went to this event with her friend, Leah Valencia Key. They were there together. He's also going to be at your event. Who's who's also speaking. Uh, Thanks to, I met Leah about a year ago through Rachel Luna. Rachel and I are great friends. And she's like, you got to meet Leah. And so these associations of just, you know, being a good friend and and, and just making these connections. But anyways, at that event, Jamie, he he pulled her up on stage basically. And she spoke for the first time on stage and shared her story. And when she was sharing her story, I was so touched and moved. I was like, someday I'm going to know this woman. And, you know, I didn't know that I was going to have this event in January, but I was like, I'm going to know this woman. And at that event, it was also the day that Leah Valencia Key got her letter from QVC that she was going to be accepted and she was going to share her products. And Jamie had Leah stand up. And I remember Leah standing up in her yellow. And so it's like, it really is so cool to see things come full circle for four years. But every single year I've asked, every single year I've sent a request. I've sent a submission. I didn't decide like, who am I? I'm just a small person. Like, I'm not, you know, cool enough to ask Jamie or ask Trent or ask Coot or ask any of these people to speak at my event. I learned something a really long time ago when I worked at a gym where celebrities would train in LA. When my husband was a resident at UCLA, I worked at this sports club, uh, LA, and Shaquille O'Neal would work out there and everything. I learned back then that people are people that everybody just wants to be appreciated and loved. And that if I could be a good person and love people for who they were, they would want to be in relationship with me. So I have great relationships with a lot of people that are, you know, quote unquote, like they're, they're really big, they're influencers, but it's because they're people just like us, you guys, they've just figured out a few things. They've dialed in a few things. They've, they've accessed parts of them that you haven't accessed yet. And so in this room, I put together people that have real depth, real experience. Like they've gone through stuff in life and they've created incredible results. And I don't just care about success. I care about people who have success personally and professionally. I care about people that can come together and teach you like, hey, you know what? I take care of myself. I love my family. I love my work. Like they are living a life in in alignment. And alignment, by the way, doesn't mean perfection. Mm -hmm. It just means that they they're really firing on all cylinders and they don't just have a certification or a big following or make a lot of money. Like they check the boxes in so many areas. And I bring these people together for the purpose of showing you different ways to succeed, different stories, and particularly to help you dive into finding your own alignment. Because your alignment is not my alignment, is not Kelsey's alignment, is not Jamie's alignment. Like we're all called to do something a little bit different in our own way. And the reason why so many of you are struggling or not succeeding or you feel stuck is you're trying to do it somebody else's way. You're trying to follow somebody else's alignment, someone else's plan, because you know what? They're successful. And when you learn how to get into alignment, listen to yourself and look at your physical, emotional, spiritual relationship and financial health or relationship with money. When you're able to look at those things and bring them into alignment, your best success is is ahead. So this event is kind of like a permission slip, like to, to set you free into 2024, feeling like you know who you are, you know what you want, you know how to get it, and you're surrounded by community that's like fully gonna cheer you on. So I'm super excited. Me too. So we're gonna be in San Antonio, Texas, January 18th to 20th. Give us a little bit of an overview of the agenda of each day 
And, you know, we have a mama's event guide that I'm happy to give to anyone that books a ticket so that you can really be set up for success to leave your family and be fully present there. And we'll link everything down below. But this is truly and really events in general. Like I said, they're the thing that is different than your day to day activity. You need both. But being in rooms like this is so impactful. It changed my life. I know it changed yours. It's changed so many others. But what are some of the specific things that are happening throughout those days? Yeah. Well, it's full immersion. That's why it changes you because it takes you out of your house and out of your norm and out of your job and out of changing diapers. And it puts you in the room where you can be fully present. So our event is jam-packed. We have a great sponsor this year, Holy Yoga. Uh, Brooke Boone, who's the founder of Holy Yoga. She is uh, doing yoga every morning, like the actual founder. There's 8,000 yoga instructors certified through her organization. She has a super cool story. So it's 7 a.m. Each morning, you're going to have the opportunity to start off with yoga and breath work. And then our event starts at 9 a.m. on Thursday. We go till 6 or 6.30. We take a break for lunch, of course. But we're talking like five, six, seven speakers a day panels of people who are doing the thing. Uh, We get up and we dance. I play the music. Like we have a good time. You're going to feel the whole range of emotions. We do have at my event, it's a multi-day event. So Thursday, Friday are like that main stage days, all the big speakers. And then Saturday is a VIP day. So I have a VIP ticket that includes things like lunches and dinners and Some of them include like brand photography. If you're like, I need some new photography. We have incredible photographers that have been shooting for us for a couple of years. So you can choose into the type of experience. You could do a general ticket for Thursday and Friday, or you can choose into the whole thing. And that VIP day on Saturday is more workshop style. So I have additional speakers coming in and doing specific workshops, as well as some of the main stage speakers that have specialties in other areas doing like that deep dive, how to let's dig in and, and get the work done. And people loved workshop day last year. I did workshop day for the first time last year because I'm a substance girl. Like I love the motivation and the inspiration, but I also always want to go a little bit deeper. So it's three days if you want, or it's two days, if you can get away for two days, whatever you choose, you are going to have your breakthroughs and it's going to be a breakthrough year. Yeah. And you have such a kind, welcoming community. I'd love for you to tell us a story about one of the women in your community that had never been to an event like this or came alone and how it totally changed her trajectory. Oh, my gosh. It happens all the time. I think about Crystal, who is a single mom who got out of an abusive relationship, who has four kids and lives in a trailer park. And the first time she came, like she had to make major sacrifices to come and to get her ticket. And to see her growth over the last couple of years and how she shows up on social media and how she's lost a ton of weight, because sometimes the first thing that we have to go through is we have to go through our physical transformation. And so to see her transform and to see her confidence grow every single year, she's become a different person. The, that, that first year she came, like she was so excited to be in that room and Amberly Lago was speaking and Amberly gave away a spot in her mastermind. And and somebody had to do something in the audience and she just like bolted out of her seat and she was the first person. So like also being in that room, then she had the opportunity to join Amberly's mastermind for six months. So I see people like her. I see a mama that came two years ago uh, to Scottsdale and she brought her baby because I'm a baby friendly person. I mean, if they're mobile and they're walking, they shouldn't be in the room. But if they're nursing yeah. and, because and they, that's going to impact your experience too, right? It's not exactly just because we don't want them there because you're not going to be able to pay. You're not going to be able to be <laughs> present. But yeah. like, say you have a, a one, two, three, four month old. That's like you're exclusively nursing. I always make it comfortable for mamas with those little teeny tinies to be there because I built my businesses while nursing and raising babies. And I put myself yeah. in rooms with nursing babies, but I knew the limit like, hey, they're crawling, they're walking, not their space, right? Yeah. But I, I remember my friend Jessica, who I've now become great friends with, coming a couple of years ago. She bought the cheapest ticket. She sat in the back of the room with her nursing baby. I had this little mama's area for mamas. And I'll never forget just going over to her and hugging her. And she was just like, wow, she sees me. And we took a picture together. Within a year, she'd gotten her coaching certification. She'd signed up her first coaching client. And just a week or so ago, 
she sent me a message about how she just signed another coaching client for the most money that she's ever that she's ever charged for a coaching yeah. client. And now she buys the top level ticket because yeah. she said, I decided I'm worth it. I decided I'm worth it. So seeing that transformation of people like launch their businesses, increase their confidence, lose the weight, choose into that more expensive ticket because it's an incredible experience, but also as a symbolism to I'm worth it, you know? Yeah. And so, a, lot yeah. of, a lot of what you do is help entrepreneurs, but the event itself is really great for anyone that's looking for any form of personal growth or expansion. Yeah. And it's called Align. It's all about living an aligned life and finding yes. what's in alignment with you. So it, you don't have to have a business to come. You definitely, right. as a person, support entrepreneurs, but there's so much more to it than that. Brooke, what is something that you're personally excited about right now, other than your event, because that's huge, that's coming right up outside of your event. What else is really lighting you up a goal that you're currently working on or that you're pushing towards? Yeah, I mean, gosh, I am feeling this really incredible energy of hope and expansion, like mm -hmm. overall over everything that I'm creating. And I feel like that's one of the reasons why I'm led to call people into a room because I feel like a lot of people have given up hope over the last few years or they've kind of been stuck or stagnant. And so in everything that I create, I just have this idea that it's going to 10x and I'm really excited yeah. to watch it happen and I'm excited to see how it's going to happen. Um, and one, one of the things I'm really feeling called to and excited about is starting to write my first book and just speaking on more other stages, right? I've got my own yeah. stage that I, speak on and, and, you know, some other, you know, places that I've spoken, but I want to speak more. I want to empower more people because my message could reach people, whether they have kids or not, whether they have a business or not. And so those are the two things that I'm really excited about is it's time for me to like buckle down and write the book. And it's time for yeah. me to get on more stages to share the message that anything is possible and that you can have it all without losing it all. Oh, I love it. So exciting. Now you have your own podcast. You have two social media pages that are amazing. We'll link all those below. But where would you like people to come and follow you and be in your world? Um, I mean, just come and follow me at Hemingway Half Dozen. I have half a dozen kids. So easy to remember Hemingway Half Dozen. And I would love to see you at a line. I'd love to know when you come that you heard me on the podcast. so I can give you a big squeeze. That event page is aligneventslive.com. And if you're listening today, you can save $100 on your ticket with code TGL100. Think a good life, TGL100. And I would love to see you in that room, like having your own personal breakthroughs and believing bigger for 2024. Absolutely. And if you were just going to put a little bit more fire under someone to take action when they get off of this podcast, you know, we've covered a lot of things, five things they can do today, an event space they can be in how to take action. What is one thing that you would say, do this today? Don't even wait till tomorrow. Well, if you really want to motivate yourself, the vision is super nice. And it's really fun to think about like all of the happy things you'll be doing and all of the, the things you visualize for your future. And that is really powerful. But I would actually like you to stop and think about what happens if you do nothing. Mm. What happens if you don't take that chance, if you don't make that change, if you don't make that move, if you don't get in that room, if you don't start that business, if you don't say the thing that you need to say, what happens if you don't do anything? Because when I think, oh my gosh, if I don't change anything, if I don't do anything in one year, I'm going to be here in three years. I'm going to be here in five years. I'm going to be here. I do not want that to be my life. And for me, that is a really powerful motivator to take action because you're either on the up curve or on the down curve. There's a no such thing as steady state. You're either moving up or you're moving down. And the choices yeah. that you make today will define your destiny and whether you're going up or down. And so take a minute to think about if I don't do this, what's going to happen? And I think yeah. that will light a fire under your butt to be like, okay, well, I got to do this. I got to get things in gear. I got to go for it. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Brooke, it's always a pleasure to talk to you. Thank you so much for being here. Thanks for having me. Sometimes the smallest act of love is all a mom needs to feel reinvigorated. If you can relate to that, I'd feel so supported by your five-star rating and written review. Take a moment and let me know what you thought about this episode.